And we're back on Morning Barbados for this Thursday morning. And we need to be talking about the Green Climate Fund. It was a fund set up to promote a paradigm shift towards low carbon and climate resilient development. And here to kind of shed some light on the fund and how um, Barbados and Barbadians can access it is Mr. Selwyn Hart. And he is the um, Climate Finance Advisor to the Caribbean Development Bank. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks Jeff. for getting up this early. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, give us some background to, to this green um, this green climate fund. First of all, thank you. Uh, good morning, and um, I'm really grateful to be given this opportunity to make this presentation. In 2009 and 2010, at the United Nations Framework Convention conferences on climate change, three important agreements on finance were made. First, there was an agreement to channel $10 billion per year over a three-year period to developing countries. It was called the Fast Start Finance Period. Um, and this money was to jumpstart um, climate actions in developing countries, help developing countries to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and also to adapt to the adverse impacts of climate change. The second agreement at those conferences was to, over time, scale up those resources to $100 billion per year by 2020. Mm -hmm. And the third agreement was to create a new fund, the Green Climate Fund, that would channel those new resources, the $100 billion a year by 2020, to developing countries. Now this fund was supposed to be completely different to existing climate funds. It was to take into account the needs of vulnerable developing countries. Its governance arrangements would, was uh, supposed to be balanced um, on unlike the governance arrangements of the existing multilateral financial institutions which are skewed in the favor of developed countries and it was supposed to and it is supposed to promote, as you correctly said, a, a transformational shift in the economies of countries to place them on a low carbon climate resilient development pathway. So uh, I, ideally, um, in basic terms, what will the climate fund do in terms of changing um, the workspace and also um, the domestic space? Okay, well, um, the two main objectives, climate resilience, mainly involves um, protecting countries, communities, and individuals from the adverse impacts of climate change. For example, in the Caribbean, um, we are very vulnerable to climate change. <clears throat> We're extremely vulnerable to hurricanes and other climatic events that we've seen a few days ago. Um, we are also negatively impacted by sea level rise, which is a consequence of, of climate change. So a key strategic priority of the fund is to protect coastal infrastructure, critical um, um, infrastructure in countries. Now, it is also designed to assist countries in um, reducing their greenhouse gas e emissions by um, promoting renewable energy and energy f efficiency. And within the context of Barbados and the, and the Caribbean, that means going towards solar, towards wind, which will not only reduce greenhouse gas emissions, it will also reduce our import bill, um, it will also save on foreign exchange, and it will provide households and individuals with cheaper and safer um, energy alternatives. Today and tomorrow, there's, there's a conference on in, in Barbados to um, show the country to the region how to access the funds. Is there a specific priority you're talking about? Are we going to start with, with, with reducing uh, you know, emissions, or, or are we going to be looking, or are you going to be recommending that they focus on, on, on coastal concerns? Which, which is it? Well, um, certainly from our perspective, from the perspective of the Caribbean countries, the Caribbean Development Bank, and our borrowing members, adaptation or um, assisting um, countries and communities to deal with the adverse impacts of climate change, which um, involve obviously coastal related issues, is our major priority. Mm -hmm. However, um, energy and renewable energy and energy efficiency is also a major 
priority for us given the high cost of energy in the region, which is three or four times um, the global average. So, um, so yes, we will prioritize adaptation, but of course, um, reducing emissions and um, switching to alternative sources of energy is also important. And the conference that will be held today and tomorrow is designed to ensure that all countries, including ours, are better able to access the Green Climate Fund and other climate finance sources. So th it, it, it's kind of ironic that, that the, the folks who put up this money are probably the largest contributors of pollutants and, and, and emissions which impact negatively on the environment. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you are right, but, um, but th there is a serious commitment globally to take action on, on climate change. And while m many of the countries that are the major contributors to, to the fund are also the major historical um, 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 contributors, contributors to greenhouse gas emissions, the reality is that if developing countries or the mm -hmm. fast growing developing countries don't take action now, then we will be in a worse situation than we currently are at the moment. Uh, I take it that it, it's obviously a, a part of reschooling and retooling, not only um, from the international perspective, but bringing it home to the region as well. How are we looking forward to um, continuing uh, this fund? Because it's a fund that has to continue to be, um, to be injected in order to see the actual growth uh, of the project. Okay, excellent question. And one of the key considerations by the board of the fund, and there is a Barbadian who sits, Mr. Derek Gibbs, mm -hmm. Chief Economist um, in the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs, who is one of 24 members of the board globally. There are only 24 countries that sit on the board, and Barbados is represented in the person of Mr. Derek Gibbs. And what the board is doing as part of its effort to finalize the operationalization of the fund is to have a regular resource mobilization exercise, a regular replenishment process. Many innovative ideas have also been put on the table by the private sector, by members of civil society to issue um, climate bonds, green bonds, so that um, um, the fund will be constantly replenished over time um, and and that we will not encounter the problem of the fund um, um, not being able to fulfill its um, noble and lofty, lofty aspirations. What about innovation in, in this regard? Uh, <coughs> have you seen or are you hearing of any um, in innovative ideas uh, coming from any of the countries of the region that, that perhaps can be, can be uh, a way that, that we can all move forward? What the Caribbean Development Bank is um, doing by partnering with the government of Germany and the Green Climate Fund in hosting this meeting is to bring the, um, raise awareness within the Caribbean region, both at the level of governments, private, um, the private sector, which has to be um, a main engine of um, transformation towards a low carbon climate resilient development um, pathway. And we're also seeking to, we recognize that the region has severe capacity constraints, both in terms of planning and accessing climate finance. So the Caribbean Development Bank has positioned itself to serve as an intermediary to help the countries of the region access the the Green Climate Fund. And there are many significant benefits from the Caribbean Development Bank playing that role. Um, it will allow countries to quickly access the fund. It will allow them to uh, um, leverage significantly greater sums of money. It will reduce transaction costs because rather than having to deal with individual countries, um, the fund will just have to deal with the bank and the bank will deal with its borrowing members. Um, it will leverage the, the high standards, um, financial management and fiduciary standards um, of the Caribbean um, Development Bank. So, so there are significant 
um, opportunities for our region, not only challenges, and we are educating and we're working with our regional governments on Monday and Tuesday next week. We will bring high level officials from ministries of finance and planning. We'll also meet at, um, at the Hilton and we will discuss many of the issues that were discussed over the course of this week so that we can bring our regional governments and the private sector up to scratch so that when the fund is operational, the Caribbean and the CDB will be first in line. The All Caribbean right, so Development uh, Bank, of course, looking at the Green Climate Fund this morning on Morning Barbados. We'll find out more when we come back. Well, we often hear persons talking about going green and we need to make the change. It's not an if, it's a must and it's when. The Caribbean Development Bank, they're actually spearheading the Green Climate Fund. And I'm talking, we're chatting with Selwyn Hart, who's the Climate Finance Advisor at the CDB. Now, going green has been something that we've been hearing on the international level. But within the Western Hemisphere and, and, and the wider international sector, uh, those approaches might be a bit different to that within the Caribbean. What are some of the tenets that have been put forward by the CDB um, for that are significantly, significantly different um, in terms of this Green Climate Fund? Thanks. Um, we have constantly stressed that the needs of small island developing states, that the challenges we face as small island developing states are significantly different from other countries. For example, um, an entire climatic event or one climatic event um, can paralyze an entire country. Um, we saw the, the devastation that was visited on New York last year by Hurricane Sandy, but um, as significant and as devastating as that hurricane was, it only affected um, um, one area in a very large country. However, um, in 2004, when Grenada was um, struck by Hurricane Ivan, um, it shut that country down for weeks. So the challenges that we face as small island developing states are completely <coughs> different. And we've asked the, the international community and the Green Climate Fund to take those um, considerations into account. We also have very relatively small bureaucracies so while a large developing country might be able to um, put all the necessary um, institutional infrastructure and in, in place to access the Green Climate Fund or other climate funds, um, small island developing states don't have that institutional infrastructure. So this is where the Caribbean Development Bank, working with the countries as well as other regional institutions like the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, CARICOM, SEDEMA, and the other regional institutions, we all need to work closely together and we are working closer together to ensure that our countries are positioned to access this fund when it is operational next year. So, Hart, as Climate Finance Advisor to the CDB, what kind of advice are you going to be giving to um, the governments and, and the private sector over the next couple of days as to the direction they should go in? Because it, it, it seems as though, um, you know, there are lots of challenges facing our part of the world, and it's going to be hard deciding where we begin. Yes, well, the challenges are immense, but there are significant opportunities for the region to access um, significant flows of grant and concessionary resources. So the advice that we will be giving countries, one, is put your house in order. Um, ensure that you, um, have, um, that, that you have clear structures to plan for, to access, um, to deliver and monitor and report on climate finance. We will also provide information on how, on precisely what countries need to do. And the third is we need to think regionally. We cannot think only as individual countries. We have to think regionally and we need to know what our priorities are. Our priorities as a region are adaptation, responding to the adverse impacts of climate change, but at the same time, um, there are significant opportunities in switching to renewable energy and energy efficiencies, 
en energy efficiency, sorry, to make our economies more competitive. But you, you raise, you, you raise um, some concerns and, and some real challenges that, that we faced, um, particularly as it relates to, to the coastal concerns mm -hmm. and the, bu the small bureaucracies that you talk about, where are we in the, in the region who have maximized the use of our, of our coastline and therefore there's not a lot of um, room to, to, to change our whole planning concept. You know, how, how do you deal with that kind of problem? That's not, a, that's not an easy solution and, and I don't care how much money you throw at it, um, we're not going to solve it, you know, tomorrow. Yeah, I fully agree with you, um, but we also have to find ways and there are some solutions that um, have already been put in place. For decades, the Caribbean Development Bank has been undertaking projects in coastal defenses, um, infrastructure, roads. Um, what we need to do now is integrate, better integrate climate considerations. For example, um, say for example, you know, say you built a seawall 20 years ago, four feet. With the evidence that we have on sea level rise, mm -hmm. um, we, we um, know that you probably have to build that seawall eight feet now. Um, so um, integrating existing knowledge or emerging science on climate change is something that we as a bank are doing we are working with our um, CARICOM technical bodies like the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center to ensure that um, we are at the cutting edge of integrating the emerging climate science into our project activities. Is your workshop um, which is uh, taken off today and tomorrow all opened up as a regional workshop? No um, what the two-day workshop today and tomorrow will be focused primarily on the international actors um, because the board has a specific mandate to look at what readiness and preparatory activities it needs in order to ensure all countries including countries like like the Caribbean are able to access the fund. On Monday and Tuesday, we'll have the regional workshop and we will inform our regional partners on the outcomes of the international workshop to enable them, as I said earlier, to better prepare to access the, f the fund when it is operational next year. You, you suggested that, that we need to think regionally. Yeah. Uh, with that in mind, is there one particular area that you think that we can, we can come together and, and, and uh, exact uh, uh, enough funds to, to address a regional problem? Yes. Um, what would that area be? <laughs> <laughs> and that area would be adaptation. Um, how, how do you protect the region from, from many of the adverse impacts of climate change? Because mm -hmm. it is internationally recognize that the Caribbean is mm -hmm. one of the most, if not the most vulnerable region to climate change. But our problem has been, yes, the international community knows that we are vulnerable, mm -hmm. but our countries have not been putting forward um, the quality investment projects demanded by the international donors. So we really have to get together as a region and see how we can help each other, how we can better use regional organizations like the Caribbean Development Bank to, to leverage um, and bundle funds on behalf of the region so that we can make these critical investments mm -hmm. in, um, in um, preserving coastal infrastructure mm -hmm. um, and protecting our communities from the adverse impacts of climate change. So, so Hart, um, give us an idea of um, not only the location for the workshops, but can um, persons within the, the private sector and other areas be a part of this workshop? Well, um, at the regional workshop, the workshop um, today and tomorrow, as I said, is an international, international, international workshop. But at the regional workshop, we have um, um, extended an invitation to, um, to some members of the private sector involved in green related initiatives. We will have um, a member of the Jamaican um, private sector who will be making um, a 
presentation on um, solar um, related issues and some of the barriers and constraints and opportunities um, to invest in the renewable energy sector but we will encourage um, private sector participation because the private sector is key and has to be part of the solution uh, so um, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious issues like um, solar energy uh, which there's an abundance of and, um, and, and things like, uh, as, as we just encountered the passage of uh, Tropical Storm Chantel, um, <coughs> in, enhanced um, radar surveillance and so on. Those are some of the areas that we need to be talking about as well. Yes, 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 um, definitely. Renewable energy and energy efficiency are key to ensuring that the problem does not get worse. Um, the greenhouse gas emissions from fast developing um, economies um, really is extremely worrying mm -hmm. and if we don't reduce emissions globally now the adaptation challenge um, the challenge that we will face in coastal communities the challenge that we will face with hurricanes will get significantly worse over time well Selwyn Hart um, climate finance advisor to the CDB we certainly appreciate you coming on Morning Barbados today and, and, and talking about the importance of this fund and we certainly hope that regional governments as well as the private sector um, you know will, will, will rally behind Nepal and, and, and find some innovative ways uh, to access these funds for the benefit of, of us all. Thanks for the opportunity and on behalf of the bank um, I'd like to give both of you some parting gifts. Mm. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Th thank, thank, thank you very so much. much.